Wow, the thing's intact. That's amazing. I'm in Independence, Kansas, standing outside of what was once the William Bishop House. The house was started in 1871 and finished in 1872. William resided here with his family and owned one of the biggest hardware stores in the area. Well, I got permission to excavate the grounds in search of artifacts left over from the family, so I'll take a walk around back and see what I can find. I spent a while gritting and probing this back area. I actually drilled through some of the cement. I got permission to do that. I found two spots. They're kind of in a row, one right here and one is up there. Now with these in a row that indicates these could be outhouse pits, when the outhouse pit filled up they would have just dug a new hole and slid it over and filled in the old one. So I'll get some tarps set out and see what's going on. Yeah, through the topsoil there were a ton of brick fragments, likely from a foundation that was here. The sandborn map showed buildings on the back lot. And underneath I started finding some glass fragments, some bottle tops, some pressed glass. This jar is early, I'm thinking 1870s. Uh, doll head, a horseshoe bottom cup, and a 1890s drugstore bottle. So I'm on the right track. I'll continue down. Oh yeah. A tool top pickle bottle. Oh, that's awesome. Looks to be in good shape. That's a uh, pre 1900. Okay, tool top drugstore bottle. No embossing. But again, good age, I'd say pre-1900 on this one as well. Alright, looks like I got a couple pieces on the way out. Could be a Mason's Patent Jar. It's a clear example. I've only dug a couple of these broken ever, and there could be a drugstore bottle up here. But I'll try to get this jar up first, and there's some kind of ironstone piece underneath it. Maybe a wash basin. But, oh, it's a ground lip. That's intact. It's a Mason's Patent Jar. That's uh, November 30th, 1858. Although uh, that's just when the jar was patented. It's uh, likely from about 1880. That's a nice piece. And next, got a drugstore bottle. And uh, another ironstone piece. It looks like some kind of a lid. This could be intact. It's intact, it's got a pattern, it looks like it's a transferware, some kind of a transferware lid, maybe to a teapot, you can see the venting hole right there. That's really nice. Alright, now the drugstore bottle. Okay, it's a Rex Oval style. That's uh, circa 1905. It's a prescription drugstore bottle. Pork top, tool top, not too bad. I've got a couple pieces on the way out. It looks like some kind of ironstone pitcher right here. And this one kind of broke loose a bit. Uh, looks like maybe an extract bottle. What's that say? Lice Chemical Manufacturing Company. And uh, Lawrence, Lawrence, Kansas. That's amazing. Look at that. 
Huh. It's a good age. Circa 1900, I suppose. Maybe 1890s. Oh, here's another dull part. This one appears to be bisque, biscuit porcelain. Uh, COD 93. I don't know exactly what that means. I'll have to look it up. Although it's no doubt German made. Huh. We're on the right track. I was clearing down some layers and got this G&G &G, G &G Meek and Hanley England. It's a semi-porcelain plate. Uh, it's got some crazing on it. I'd say it's right around 1900, right in that era. There's also another bottle that flipped up here. Uh, this looks like a CM Meyer and Company. It's a cough syrup, actually. Uh, looks like a Dr. J. Bulls. That's Baltimore, Maryland. It's a tooled top. Cool medicine. Uh, it's blown out when they threw it down the pit. It must have hit up against something, maybe that plate. But, uh, at circa 1890, I'd say. It looks like there's some kind of ironstone pitcher on the way out. And, well, this use layer just continues, so I'm going to try to pull this piece out. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, it's an ironstone pitcher, just plain whiteware. Likely English made. Uh, I find a lot of these across the U.S. But uh, the rest of the pieces should be down here somewhere. Huh. Well, this is a good one. Fell out of the side. What do we have on it? Thomas Kalk, druggist, Independence, Kansas. That's an earlier one. I say that's circa 1900. That's uh, a Blake style, I believe. Blake style drugstore bottle. That is awesome. We've got another one over here. Let's see here. In a cold cream container. Oh wow, what do we have? Opera House Drugstore, Independence, Kansas. That's amazing. Look at that. That's circa, circa 1900, maybe even into the 1890s. That's incredible. Sometimes these are embossed on the bottom. This one looks like it is. Chemical company. This milk glass is really hard to read. Resinol Chemical Company, Baltimore, Maryland. Okay, so some kind of cosmetic product. Milk glass. There's another drugstore bottle on the way out. Looks like. Okay, nothing home on this one. It's a Philadelphia Oval style. Could be Macaulay. Yeah, Macaulay, out of Pittsburgh. Oh, a little better age, 1880s probably. A couple more pieces here. It looks like a mason jar. It's got some great iridescence on it, and a drugstore bottle. I've got it fairly loose. Let's see. Oh wow. W.R. Housel Pharmacist Independence, Kansas. This is an early one. Wow, this is a strap side. Patented 1881. Look at that, that's amazing. Now this jar. Okay, oh. And this also flipped out. This is a really old piece. Look at that, iridescence on it. Looks like some kind of food bottle. Okay, we got some kind of writing. A baking, baking powder.
Horsford's baking powder. That's a really early one. This thing's possibly 1870s. That's amazing. And it looks like a Mason's patent jar. Okay, it's got the monogram. Yeah, November 30th, 1858. Bod was knocked out, must have been why they threw it away. Looks like another Horsford's baking powder, probably. Yeah. Wow. Again, that's great age. It's got the shoulder embossing. Horsford's baking powder. Great iridescence. So far, so good. What do we have here? Strap sided. Another William Housel. Pharmacist, Independence, Kansas. Wow. It's an 1881 patent. Working my way across the south side and notice another drugstore bottle. Not sure if this one's embossed, but it's also some ironstone whiteware and let's see. Oh, looks like a French square style. Sometimes these these will be embossed, sometimes a lot of the time they're not. And this one is not embossed. Probably Whittle Tatum or something. I don't know if there's any class company marks. Oh, there you have it, drugstore bottle anyway, circa 1890. What's this? And another one. What is going on here? I'll clear these ones out up top first. Piso's cure for consumption. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Hazeltine. Yeah, Piso's cure for consumption. This was a popular product during the turn of the century. Uh, tuberculosis was running rampant. This is it's like a clear, maybe an aqua color. I found these in green as well. Let's see what else we got here. It looks like a broken bottle up there. Let's see what's going on with these down here. There's another one of these baking powder bottles. Yeah, baking powder. Horsford's baking powder. Kind of ink bottle. What's this thing say? Oh. Oh, maybe it's not embossed. It's an 
oldie. That's a really old ink bottle. I've actually never dug one quite like this before. Would have had a paper label around here. Hmm. like a transferware cup. You can see that image was transferred onto it prior to the glazing. It's a, another really popular product around the turn of the century. All right, let's see what's going on up here. Crystal Drugstore Sinclair and Company. Independence, Kansas. Now this is significant. So the guy who started Sinclair Oil, uh, his relatives, possibly his parents were druggists here in town. This is absolutely incredible. Look at that. Wow, that's uh, circa 1900, maybe a bit earlier. Looks like there's another one on the way out as well. A couple more. Let's see what we got going on here. It's a broken, looks like extract bottle or something right here. Shift the lip. It's kind of stuck on a window. Opera House Pharmacy, Independence, Kansas. This one's different. This has, wow, a uh, balancing scale on it. And 1894 patent date. Wow. Unbreakable comb. Sometimes these have a company name on it. It's a Bacolite, I believe. You can see the color in it there. It's like a pre-plastic. Some folks will actually confuse these for plastic. Super fine rubber. Okay, so it's a rubber comb. Again, not plastic, although definitely looks like it. I'm still working across the north side and this pit just keeps giving. It's this broken panel bottle. Um, some kind of extract or something. Kind of in the way. Oh, it's a California fig syrup. I find these all over the place. This was one of the most popular products in the country at the time. Syrup of figs. It was a laxative type thing, I believe. Hairbrush. Maybe Bacolite or uh, some early rubber, I guess. Looks like maybe another drugstore bottle. Some kind of bottle in here anyway. This might be round. Plate fragment. And another gold rimmed. Maybe it's got some kind of a floral pattern. Huh. Opera House Drugstore, Independence, Kansas. Circa 1905.
Hmm. Kind of tooled top. Peacock Chemical Company. Can't say I've dug one of these before. Full of groundwater. The pit is all finished up. I concluded it was an outhouse pit and used from 1885 to 1905. It was four feet deep, four feet long, three feet wide. Here's the hall, we got a good variety. There's a chemical bottle, those Independence Kansas drugstore bottles, some blank drugstore bottles, consumption cures, baking powder, mason jars, a ton of broken windows, some broken ironstone whiteware, some bricks, other odds and ends. Well, I'll get this filled back in and hit the road. There's yesterday's dig site all cleaned up. And today, I have this spot marked out. It doesn't have a lot of width, although it has some depth. I'm guessing this could widen out like the other. I'm kind of excited about the spot. We'll see how it goes. I'll get the sod taken off and see what's down there. I got through the topsoil, you can see this row of orange bricks that could be from an outhouse's foundation or from a foundation of a building that was here later on. Notice this maroon colored ash. So I've seen this in a lot of earlier pits across the Midwest. Someone had mentioned it could be the iron content in the ash from the coal they were mining at the time, causing it to change that color. So not entirely sure, but so far the signs are right. I'm off to a great start. This flipped out. Ellen W. That's Lorenz and Whiteman. They were out of Pittsburgh. The partnership dissolved in 1874. It's got a nice applied top on it. So this is about as good of a start as I could get. It's likely some kind of medicine bottle. Uh, looks like some kind of bottle on the way out. Definitely an early style. Let's see here. Looks like nothing home on it. Another early piece, let's see. Oh yeah, it's got a key mold bottom, look at that. That's beautiful. Oh wait. Oh whoa. RJ Brown, Leavenworth, Kansas. That is incredible. <sighs> the age on this thing, look at that. Wow. Looks like maybe some medicine or extract. This might predate the standard kind of uh, drugstore bottles. It's found in turn of the century sites. That's incredible. Okay, the top's broken. But what's this say? These are usually embossed. There is a... Uh, Nothing home on this piece, unfortunately. It looks like it was some kind of big food container. There's a the top that's broken off. It's a key mold bottom though. That's definitely got some good age. Look at that. That's that's a really nice piece. Oh, here we have it. Some undigested seeds. That's the MO of an old outhouse pit. So definitely onto something here. I'm just getting into it, so I'll continue down and see what we can find. It looks like an extract bottle. Kind of a standard piece. Technically a ball neck style, but that's again got great age. Let's see. Next ones. Loose. Okay, they must have broken the top when they pried the cork out way back when. Again, it's really good age. Could have been some kind of a essence bottle or spice bottle. A 
is a lamp chimney. That's kind of cool. It must have broken the bottom at some point and threw it down the pit. Let's see. Rim off of a chamber pot. Iron stone. And some kind of little, maybe essence bottle. Uh, pulled up one of these just a bit ago with the top missing. This one's, this one appears to be intact. The key mold bottom. I love the sage on that. I just pulled up this old glass tumbler. It's got some great iridescence on it. Some kind of opaling there. And it looks like there's Another one on the way out. Another glass of some sort anyway. Definitely into some kind of use layer. Lamp chimney. Let's see. Okay, it's a fluted type glass, the base is broken off. Some nice panels on it though, cool. Another extract bottle. No embossing. These uh, stubbier necks though are earlier than the longer ones for whatever reason 1870s here I suppose hmm. little cologne or perfume of some sort it looks like tops broken must have when they pried the cork out it's sometimes embossed but I don't think this one is huh. oh, there it is London. Atkinson, London. Must be some kind of perfume. Hmm. Maybe a chamber pot actually it looks a little bigger. Wow, the thing's intact. <laughs> Must have dropped it down by mistake or something. Yeah, no maker's mark. Anything inside of it? Hmm. That's cool. An ironstone chamber pot. Kind of dish or goblet or something. Let's see why they discarded it all those years ago. Huh. Oh, here we go. L and W Glassworks. Oh, another really early piece. No embossing. Paneled. But uh, key mold L and W. They were out of business in 1874. That's awesome. Well, I cleared down the next layer. This little bottle flipped out. Looks like a another one of the little essence type bottles or something along those lines. Key mold bottom. No embossing on this one either. Huh. Oh, what do we have?
Gillette's. Chemical Works, Chicago. That's cool. Looks like some kind of extract, probably. Ball neck style. Early top. I like it. Well, the site's all finished up. I concluded it was the earliest outhouse pit used by the residents. It was roughly five feet deep, three feet wide, four feet long. Here's the hall, everything dated back to the 1870s. Had some incredible age. It's uh, some medicine bottles, jar, some drinking glasses, those little possible essence bottles, some extracts, lamp parts, some iron stone, including that chamber pot. That's a good dig. I'll get it filled back in.